Five hours. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7. I was going to start all the way down to verse 24. Are you all ready? Verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. So, how many know there's a wide gate and there's a narrow gate? And most people are taking the easy way. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13. Matthew 7, 13. Now I'm on 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few be there that find it. Is it because it's hard to find? Or because you have to crucify your flesh? <clears throat> But it's worth it. Remember that good news I started with? You know, anytime that you start talking about crucifying your flesh, the enemy just comes and, oh, it's so hard. Oh, that's so much work. Oh, he's sucking all the fun out of life. And, you know, you forget about all the joy, the peace. You're not anxious. You're not all worked up. You actually get to sleep at night, you know. Well, so I was sleeping before. Well, I'll get there. Hold on. I'll meddle with you later. Yeah. I want to get to the good stuff. Because of false prophets which cometh to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. We're living in the last days. Uh, I wasn't going to teach on this much, but you know, you got tons of people preaching the easy way and they're leading them off a cliff. I'm just making it short and to the point. If you, you know, if you don't have to change your life to serve Jesus, then what's the point of Jesus? Now, can you change your life without Jesus? No. I don't clean my fish before I catch them, and neither does Jesus. I'm thankful for that. He's still cleaning me, okay? I'm not, I believe in holiness, but you know, I also believe in sanctification, and sanctification is a process. There's a bunch of theological terms for you. Come to our basic Bible doctrine. I'll teach you what all the big words mean. I'll tell you now in a minute. Hold on. Don't get upset. You shall know them by their fruits. You hang around someone long enough, you'll see what kind of fruit they got. You want to see a deceived person? They won't recognize their own fruit. They'll think it all looks good. Do men gather grapes, thorns, or figs of thistles? You know, are they a pain to be around or are they sweet to eat? I'm just, come on, that's, come on. Are they a pain to be around or are they sweet to eat? Are you a pain to be around or are you sweet to eat? If not, you know you got some work in the fruit area. That's okay. That's part of it. That's why Jesus talks about pruning and stuff. I'm so thankful Jesus mastered grafting before we even knew what it was. You know, we have all these hybrid plants now. He knew how to make us hybrid. He put his DNA in us and just totally changed us. But that's a whole other thing. I'm getting to the message. Just come on. I'm being calm today. <laughs> Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Does that not seem like an easy thing to understand? But in the world, we he, here's the thing. He started off talking about believers. Now he's talking about people going to hell. 
Well, he talked, started talking to him off about some people that confess to be believers and started talking about the difference between a true believer and ones that were just playing believer. Do you know, as a guy that came from the world I came from, I don't understand the whole playing church thing. If I was going to be bad, I was 100% bad. But here's the deal. They're deceived. They think they're going to make it. They've deceived themselves so much. But how many know you can't live one way and expect God to bless it? Right? But how many of hold on for some of you. How many of you also can't live that way without God's help? He has to put his super to your natural. If you could have done it, you wouldn't have needed the Savior. Okay? Clean up that a little bit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Now, sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to the choir this morning. We don't know all the... Does anybody want to be cast into the lake of fire that's meant for demons? We don't talk about this no more. And I realize there was like a whole hundred years that's all they talked about was fire and brimstone. But going to hell is a real thing. And if you don't have your act together, it's a real possibility. Why chance it? You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But the Bible says if you examine yourself, you won't, then the Lord won't be doing it for you. How many would rather you do your own fruit inspection than God come along and do it? That's all I'm asking. Do your own fruit inspection. Line up with the Word of God. When you see bad fruit, pick it off. Change how you're doing stuff. Ain't nobody perfect, but we can all start striving for the mark. Come on. Because if you don't, there's coming a day where a whole lot of people thought they were in the right gate. They're going to split hell wide open. Isn't that sad? This ain't part of the message either, but it's for somebody. Not every man that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into it that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in their name? Now we're seeing we're talking about church folk again. Come on. Are y'all still here? We're talking about church folk. These guys are prophesying, preaching. They're going to split hell wide open. God used them. Just because God uses you doesn't mean that you're okay. He used a donkey. You ain't special. You don't know what I'm talking about? He used a donkey to prophesy. Some people are like the donkey that uh, Jesus rode in on on Palm Sunday. He went on telling all his buddies, man, did you all see me? And I walked in. They threw palm branches down for my hooves to ride on. Boy, they thought I was something special. Not realizing it was the guy that was on him that was so special. He thought he was a special one. And a lot of people are that way because they don't realize that they're only special because Jesus is in them. It's not about them. Just remember, you're a good donkey. Y'all still here? Prophesied in my name and they have cast out devils and, and in my name have done wonderful works. Just because God used you don't mean you're okay. You still need to do your fruit inspection. And then I will perfect. Now we're down to the stuff I was actually going to preach. That was all free for somebody today that uh, God wanted to talk to. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew them. Depart from me, you that, ye that work iniquity. You that are in bondage. If you're in bondage, you're bound to those things. Someday he's going to say that. You don't have to stay that way. God can set you free. <laughs> Isn't that good news? All right. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and, and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Uh, I'm going to jump ahead here on this scripture. You're gonna, we're going to look at two scriptures here. Both of them heard the same words. Both of them sat in the same service. 
Only one of them chose to do anything. Only one of them made it through the storms of life. Come on, we're not talking about people that's never heard the word. We're talking about people that sit and hear the word. You're hearing this morning. We're living in the last days. You're going to have storms. You're going to have rough times. You're going to have stuff going on in your life that you have no control over. But you have Jesus, who's the solid rock. Which I'm going to preach on more in a minute. But you cannot just hear it. I believe they hear it and knew it, some of them, but they chose not to do it. Doing it is where the rubber meets the road. It's where action takes place. It's the hard stuff. It's work. I've been doing it 25 years. I still got to get up every day and do the work. Sometimes I don't pass the mustard myself. Maybe, come on, maybe my, maybe I got a little too frustrated with my wife. Guess what I got to do? Wife, I'm sorry. That was not Christ-like. Now whether she forgives me or not, that's between her and God. I did my part. Oh my. Come on, are you hearing me today? Yeah. Nobody's saying doing it is easy. But man, the, the options of not doing it, there's no choice. And if you do do it, you have the sure promises of God. When all hell comes against you, he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. The church is in us. He said, he said Peter, he said this, he said Peter that he would be the solid rock and Jesus is the cornerstone and Peter's the rock. And so everything is based upon the rock. The rock is Jesus. I mean, there's about four scriptures that are tied together for you. Y'all with me? Let's go back to reading this real fast. Therefore, whoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Will you put that picture up? I took this picture right here at the Picture Rocks National Park, Seashores, something, Lake Superior. If we could blow it up, I would, but if you look close, that tree is just out on a rock in the middle of nowhere. And if you look even closer, it literally has a root going midair here over to the other rock bluff. And I said this earlier in the video, we're we're building these tower gardens and hydroponic systems and that to grow uh, food indoors and, and that and selling them and things. But uh, the reason why I say that, I've done a ton of study and they tell you even to put a uh, fan on your plants when they're indoors to harden them. Because if you don't put a fan on them, they're so delicate, any little thing they'll break. But how is it why in Christians when storms come we get so upset? Nobody enjoys the hardening, but if God didn't harden you, you could never make it through the next storm in life. And that's also what usually brings the nutrients that you need. How many nutrients have been carried on the wind to this tree? But he was built upon the rock. Is that thing going to wash out from underneath it anytime soon? Is it going to go anywhere? No. no. As I was, the Lord told me I had to go find that image in the middle of worship service. He told me to put that up there for this message. Let's read the rest of this. You can leave that up there. 
And every man that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You know, it's funny, as a pastor, you, you, you give people the word, they do these things, they fall, you pick them up, and hopefully they get set up on the solid rock, and hopefully they start working things out themselves. But, uh, you should see the look on so many people's faces when their houses fall. They're so shocked. Like, how could this happen to me? I went to church. I heard the word. How did this happen? Never once examining what they built their house on or whether or not they were actually doing the word or not. And how much of it they took it. You know, when you start talking about the Bible to people, and listen, I talk the Bible, nothing more, nothing less. You'll never hear me give my opinions. I'll just give you the word over and over and over. Sometimes over and over and over and over and over. And sometimes over and over and over again. But everybody always wants to say, especially the ones that are hearing and not doing, they say, well, let me tell you what I think. I know I'm in for it then. And out of love, I listen to them and I let them right along and see if I can steer them a little bit the other way. Maybe I can put a seed or two in at that time. Because I'm not here to chop people's legs out from underneath them. I'm here to help them. But if you're going through some storms today, we're going to have to go to a different verse and change focus here in just a minute. If you're going through some storms today, you just need to make sure your life is built upon the rock. Because it's the only sure thing that's going to stand in these last days. And only you can examine your life. And stop resenting the storms that are strengthening you. Amen. Psalms 46. Everybody want to go there? We're about to get to the good stuff. Psalms 46. Mm -hmm. using paper it takes me a little while longer 46 verse 1 so God's our rock in the middle of the storms right Psalms 46 verse 1 God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble wouldn't it be nice if we never had no trouble I asked Jesus into my heart why do I still got trouble be of good cheer. In this world, you will have trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have already overcome the world. I preached on that last week. The week before, one of them. Come on, be of good cheer. Ha, ha, ha. Laugh at the devil. But when you know who your God is, He becomes a refuge. A refuge is a place you run to when everything is crashing down. It says, He is your strength. That's, the, that's your safety place. Come on. That's your rock that doesn't move. That's the place that, that no, nothing can reach you, nothing can shake you, nothing can take you out. It should. This church right now should be a place of refuge where you go into and you get alone with God and the worship and the anointing of God comes in and it strengthens you and it girds you up. So, so much that I pray when you leave here today, you feel like you can swing out over hell on a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. You just go, Whoa! Come on. And you know that you're going to make it because the great I am is in you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Who is I am? I am is everything you have need of. Well, every time the devil comes up and says, who do you think you are? I am's got it. Well, how are you going to beat this? I don't know, but I am's got it. Come on. And if you don't know who I am is, 
Start studying to show yourself approved so you do. Which voice are you listening to? Verse 2, therefore we will not fear. Now, you know, this, every time you talk about fear, you get two kinds, two, usually two kinds of people. The ones that say, if you have any fear at all, you're a wimp and you're not of God. But then you have ones that say, well, everybody's got fear. It's just natural. I just learned to live with it. <laughs> you know, everything with God is a balance. How I many know the Bible says that Jesus had every emotion we had as human beings? How I many know fear is a human response to things? You know, if you put a mistake at me, you should be in fear for your life. Some of you would get that way, but you know. But actually, I've overcome that, but uh, I still don't like them. I mean, who would want to play with poisonous snakes? That's just dumb. I shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, we have a choice in fear. The Bible, you know, yes, it's impossible to have fear and faith at the same time. Faith comes out fear. But it's something that you have to put under the blood of Christ. Okay? So you're, he says we will not. It doesn't say we are unable to. Y'all with me? You're able to fear. The thing is, you're going to choose, is God bigger than your whatever that thing you're afraid of? Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters therefore roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling, therefore Selah. If there's earthquakes, volcanoes, if the world's falling apart, Selah, peace, peace. I'm just going to be at peace. I mean, that's saying something, ain't it? If the old ground started shaking today, we're going to do better. See, love. he's crazy, man. He's taking this Christian stuff too far. <laughs> you just canceled service Wednesday night for some carbon monoxide poisoning. You let fear rule you. No, I did not. Or I would have left with you. <laughs> By the way, it's fixed. <laughs> Though all those things go on, let's get down to verse 4. <laughs> there is a river. <laughs> the streams whereof shall make glad. <laughs> there is a river. And whatever is tearing you up, whatever is turning your world upside down, there is a stream in the middle of that desert that makes glad. Glad is joy. The joy of the Lord. Come on, is your strength. And Romans 15, 13 says, He'd fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever you're going through, come on, when you get your head right, realize who your rock is, God says, I'll put a stream right in the middle of it and there will always be a stream of joy for you. If you don't know what that means, I, I encourage you to come drink of the waters uh, this morning of joy that God has flowing. The river of life. Living water. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be got moved. God shall help her and that right her. And it goes on to say, I'll read this just because it contains these last days. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah, come behold, the works of the Lord that desolations have made in the earth. He hath made wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot of fire. Be still and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Yeah, he said, just chill out and be at peace. You'll see me whip it all in the end. And I'm going to give you streams of joy in the middle of the desert. 
Sounds like a pretty good rock to sit on for me. I think I can camp on this rock. Can you camp on this rock? Can you put some roots down here? 